God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the lord lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious lord
The second lesson this morning comes to us from 2 Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised all and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here in the second reading. Thanks be to God. Good morning. The Psalm for today, uh, March 14th, is Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them in the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through, through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and have healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and for your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. Hear this gospel lesson from the third chapter of John. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of god's one and only son this is the verdict light has come into the world but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and whoever and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that he, what he has done has not has been done through God. This is the gospel of our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Amen. John 3.16 is a verse that we know. It's a verse that at least the numbers modern culture recognizes. <clears throat> we are familiar with John 3.16. I have on countless occasions reminded us that we need to be aware of what occurs 
right after John 3, 16, you have, I have said, you have to have John 3, 16 and 17. And it's even nice to have the following verses. Let me reread John 3, 16, kind of from the message Bible. Remember, a paraphrase. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, <clears throat> his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed by believing in him. Anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God did not go to all the trouble of sending his son <clears throat> merely to point an accusing finger telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Wow. Wow. You see, I'm, while I have read the message previously in sermons, I'm not usually a fan of the paraphrase. I'm much more a fan of um, a translation that tries to stick to the, the words as much as you can in translate in an ancient language to modern language. But how powerful does it is it for us to reconsider John 3:16 in the light of John 3:17? <clears throat> I say this because I think we often see Christians pointing fingers at other Christians, other believers and saying they don't believe the right way, they don't do the right things. I will disagree with people theologically. I will even disagree with other pastors and preachers because I don't agree with their theology, with what they are preaching, and oftentimes I think they cause more harm than good. That is all true. But notice something, even when I disagree, I do try very hard not to say that they are condemned. Because I do believe and trust that they do believe in Jesus. That they do believe in God's word made flesh. The divine logos, Emmanuel, God with us, the Christ who went to the cross for us and for all believers, for all of humanity. There's another translation of John 3.16 that says, for God so loved all of humanity that he sent his only son. That's powerful. And it's important to keep that in mind, especially for me when I see other preachers that I don't agree with at all. And I'm going to lay out a few things because I think we're all just as guilty of doing this. Maybe it's not about a specific individual. Maybe it's about a group of people that we say, you know what, they're, they're condemned to hell anyway. And we overlook whether or not they believe. <clears throat> we overlook the power of Jesus. It doesn't say God sent God's only begotten son so that whoever believes and does the right thing or and looks like us or and practices faith like us or doesn't do X, Y, and Z. No, it just says, whoever believes in me. Now, yes, as Christians, we are called to respond to that belief. 
to that grace and mercy. And I think we have a very clear, clear teacher. I think Jesus lays it out fairly clear cut. We've talked about the past few Sundays of Lent, what it means to follow Jesus, at least somewhat. We also have Jesus's, you know, sorting of the sheep and goats. Whatever we have done to the least of these, we have also done to Jesus. We have guidance from Jesus, how we are to respond to the grace, peace, love, and mercy that we have been already given on no account of our own. That is most certainly true, to use the Lutheran phrase. And yet, we find ourselves pointing fingers, condemning people, or we see others who claim to be Christians, followers of Christ, condemning people to hell, condemning, going against John 3, 16 and 17, in my opinion. You know, I look at preachers who I think are very much in the business of going and condemning people. Going against John 3, 16 and 17 and 18. Because <clears throat> at least according to John, it's whoever believes in Jesus is saved and will have eternal life. And as Lutherans, we can take it one step further. Again, belief is a gift of the Spirit. We don't have to do anything to get that belief. We can certainly <clears throat> be part of the partnership to develop our faith, our belief, our trust. But in and of itself, it is a seed that is planted, given to us by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. For John, that's the paraclete, the, the person, the advocate that comes after Jesus, the, the part of the Trinity that continues to be with us. We embrace Lenten disciplines and practices so that we can grow in faith, not to earn faith, not to earn salvation, not to save our seat in heaven, but instead to de further develop our belief. But there's so many that overlook that, while also still quoting John 3.16 as a personal application. And I think we are challenged to look at John 3, 16 and look at the other and say, hmm, <clears throat> I don't necessarily theologically agree with you. And yet, I do have faith that you believe. And I'm not going to question that belief. And if I don't question that belief, because of my Lutheran understanding of where belief comes from, I can also not question whether or not you are saved. I mean, ultimately, it's not my place anyway, right? And we do have this John 3, 16 and 17. Whoever believes in him, regardless of what you have done or what they have done. Regardless of whether or not we think their actions are atrocious, are an abomination, there's multiple things in the Bible that are pointed to as abominations, just to be clear. Salvation is theirs too. And thank God for that.
because I am sure there are times, whoever you are, that you are watching this, that you're like me. I am sure there have been people and are people and will continue to be people that question me. And there might even be some that condemn me. But I believe. I live into John 3, 16 and 17. I believe in Jesus the Christ. Jesus the anointed one. I believe that God sent God's only son. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That applies to you, that applies to me, that applies to all of humanity. And I will take it one step further. I believe that God continues to reach out to all of humanity, continues to find ways to be in right relationship with humanity, all of humanity. So even those that I may not understand, even those I will say that I think are not part of the Christian faith, I think God can still be with them and still continues to reach out in him. It's the logos that is the way, the truth, the light. It is, and who's, who are we to put that divine word into one single box and say that it is impossible for God to interact with others in other manners. You may disagree with that. It's okay. It's okay. I get it. But yet, we are united through faith, through belief given to us through the Holy Spirit. And at the end of the day, I know where I'm going. I know where you're going. And thank God for that. Now, how do we respond is the question we must ask ourselves as we continue to journey through this Lenten season. Amen. Yeah.
as thy hosts above, pray and praise me without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, Let us be, let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. Our service continues by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You sent your Son, that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry, our ELCA Global Partner Churches, and Young Adults in Global Mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who, led in time, who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace, that we show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter, especially the Brunswick Community um, Food Bank. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. At this time, you may offer any intercessions you would like, either aloud or in your heart or mind or soul. Um, God hears all our prayers. Your son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Please take a minute and share that peace with each other in the comment section at this time. We continue our service with returning to God a portion of that which God has already given to us. It is at this time that we give our tithes and our offerings. We give thanks to those that were, have been able to continue to financially support the ministries of St. Paul's and Bethany Lutheran churches. We ask that if you have done so in the past, that you continue to do so. If you are seeing this video and you have not supported financially the congregation and you are able to, we ask that you join us at this time. It is these gifts of financial gifts that we that allow us to continue the ministry of the congregations as well as produce things like this digital worship. but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we have received from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Look at all my trials and tribulations, sinking in a gentle pool of wine. 